The UGM-133A Trident II, or Trident D-5 is a submarine-launched ballistic missile, built by Lockheed Martin Space Systems in Sunnyvale, California, and deployed with the U.S. and Royal Navies. It was first deployed in March 1990, and is still in service. The Trident II Strategic Weapons System is an improved submarine-launched ballistic missile with greater accuracy, payload, and range than the Trident C-4, strengthening U.S. strategic deterrence. The Trident II is considered to be a durable sea-based system capable of engaging many targets. It enhances the U.S. position in strategic arms negotiation with performance and payload flexibility that can accommodate active treaty initiatives. The Trident II's increased payload allows nuclear deterrence to be accomplished with fewer submarines. Trident II missiles are carried by 14 U.S. Ohio in four British Vanguard-class submarines, with 24 missiles on each Ohio class and 16 missiles on each Vanguard class. USS Tennessee was the first submarine to be armed with Trident IIs, and there have been 157 successful test flights of the D-5 missile since design completion in 1989, the most recent being from the USS Kentucky in November 2015. The D-5 is the sixth in a series of missile generations deployed since the sea-based deterrent program began 60 years ago. It is estimated that 540 missiles will be built by 2013. The Trident D5LE version will remain in service until 2042. History The Trident II was designated to be the latest longer range missile, performing greater than its predecessor. In 1972, the U.S. Navy projected an initial operating capability date for the Trident II in 1984. The U.S. Navy continued to advance the IOC date to 1982. On October 18, 1973, a Trident program review was administered. On March 14, 1974, the U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense disseminated two requirements for the Trident program. The first was an accuracy improvement for the Trident C-4. The second requirement asked for an alternative to the C-4, or a new Trident II missile with a larger first-stage motor than the C-4. Studies were conducted to determine whether the more expensive Trident II could be constructed similar to the U.S. Air Force's MX ICBM. This was done primarily to decrease budget costs. It was established that the Trident II would be 83 inches in diameter and 44 feet in length in order to maintain performance with the existing MX ICBM. Modifications to the guidance system, electronics hardening, and external protective coatings were incorporated into the design. While this satisfied the U.S. naval study requirements, it did not accommodate the U.S. Air Force payload requirements. Propulsion stages were proposed to be used between the first stage and second stage motors, effectively making the Trident II a longer three-stage missile than the C-4. Studies were delayed in 1978 when Congress only approved $5 million of the suggested $15 million for the Naval Air Force program studies. By December 1978, the U.S. Navy and Air Force studies agreed that the savings made by a similar missile structure would not be effective. It was determined that the U.S. Navy and Air Force maintain and be responsible for their own unique weapon systems. The U.S. Navy continued with their own weapon design of the Trident II. In March 1980, U.S. Secretary of Defense Harold Brown proposed an increased level of funding for the submarine-launched ballistic missile modernization. Emphasis was strained for the need of increased accuracy. The House Armed Services Committee recommended no funding, while the Senate Armed Services Committee recommended full funding of $97 million. The SASC asked for a plan which incorporates the fullest possible competition. Should consider competing among contractors for each major component, including the integrated missile. $65 million was awarded for the submarine-launched ballistic missile modernization. On October 2, 1981, President Reagan called for the modernization of the strategic forces. The Defense Department directed the Navy to fund all development of the Trident II D-5 missile with a December 1989 IOC. All research and development effort would be directed toward a new development, advanced technology, high-accuracy Trident II D-5 system. 
In December 1982, Deputy Sec. Frank Carlucci advised Secretary of the Navy Caspar Weinberger to include funding for a new RV warhead combination for Trident II. The re-entry vehicle was to be designated as the MK-5, which was to have an increased yield than the MK-4. The development contract for Trident II was issued in October 1983. On December 28, 1983, the Deputy Sect authorized the Navy to proceed with full-scale engineering development of the Trident II D-5. The first Trident II launch occurred in January 1987, and the first submarine launch was attempted by Tennessee, the first D-5 ship of the Ohio class, on March 21, 1989 off the coast Cape Canaveral, Florida. The launch attempt failed four seconds into the flight because the plume of water following the missile rose to greater height than expected, resulting in water being in the nozzle when the motor ignited. Once the problem was understood, relatively simple changes were quickly made, but the problem delayed the IOC of Trident II until March 1990. IOC for SWFPAC completed on schedule in 2001 which allowed Trident II SSBN to be supported in the Pacific Theater. Design, Trident II was designed to be more advanced than Trident I, and have a greater range and payload capacity. It is accurate enough to be used as a first strike weapon. The Trident II is a three-stage rocket, each stage containing a solid fuel rocket motor. The first motor is made by Thiecol and Hercules Incorporated. This first stage incorporates a solid propellant motor, parts to ensure first stage ignition, and a thrust vector control system. The first stage section, compared to the Trident C4, is slightly larger, allowing increased range and a larger payload. In addition to a larger motor, the D5 uses an advanced and lighter fuel binder than the C4. This fuel is more commonly known as an EPE-75. Both the first and second stage motors are connected by an interstage casing, which contains electronic equipment and ordnance for separation during flight. The second stage also contains a motor made by Thiecol and Hercules Incorporated, parts to ensure the second stage ignition, and a TVC system. The first and second stages are both important to the structural integrity of the missile. To ensure that the stages maintain a maximal strength to weight ratio, both stages are reinforced by a carbon fiber reinforced polymer hull. The second and third stage sections are connected by an integrated equipment adapter section. The equipment adapter section is modified to be shorter and more compact than the C4's adapter section. The D5's equipment section contains critical guidance and flight control avionics, such as the MK6 navigation system. The equipment section also contains the third stage TVC system, ordnance for ejecting from the second stage motor, and the MIRV platform. The nose fairing shields the payload and third stage motor. Mounted within the nose cap is an extendable aero spike. This aerodynamic spike effectively decreases drag by 50%. The third stage hull is also reinforced by carbon fiber and Kevlar. Equals sequence of operation equals. Once the launch command is given, expanding gas within the launch tube forces the missile upward and out of the submarine. Within seconds. The missile breaches the surface of the water and the first stage thrust vectoring control subsystem ignites. This allows the missile to correct its position prior to first stage motor ignition. Once the position is corrected, the first stage motor ignites and burns for approximately 65 seconds until the fuel is expended. When the first stage motor ceases operation, the second stage TVC subsystem ignites. The first stage motor is then ejected by ordnance within the interstage casing. Once the first stage is cleared, the second stage motor ignites and burns for approximately 65 seconds. The nose fairing is then jettisoned, separating from the missile. When the nose fairing is cleared of the missile, the third stage TVC subsystem ignites, and ordnance separates the second stage motor. The third stage motor then ignites pushing the equipment section the remaining distance of the flight. When the third stage motor reaches the targeted area, the post-boost control system ignites, and the third stage motor is ejected. The Astro Inertial Guidance uses star positioning to fine-tune the accuracy of the inertial guidance system after launch. 
as the accuracy of a missile is dependent upon the guidance system knowing the exact position of the missile at any given moment during its flight, the fact that stars are a fixed reference point from which to calculate that position makes this a potentially very effective means of improving accuracy. In the Trident system this was achieved by a single camera that was trained to spot just one star in its expected position. If it was not quite aligned to where it should be it would indicate that the inertial system was not precisely on target and a correction would be made. The equipment section, with the MIRV, then aims the re-entry vehicles towards Earth. The payload is then released from the MIRV platform. To prevent the PBCS correctional thrust from interfering with the RV when released, the equipment section initiates the plume avoidance maneuver. If the RV will be disrupted by the PBCS nozzle's thrust, the nearest nozzle will shut off until the RV is away from the MIRV. The PAM is used only when a nozzle's plume will disrupt the area near an RV. The PAM is a specialized design feature added to the Trident II to increase accuracy. Specifications, unit cost, 37.3 million US dollars, range, with full load 7,840 kilometers. With reduced load approximately 7,456 miles, maximum speed, approximately 18,030 miles per hour, terminal phase, guidance system, the MK-6 Astro Inertial Guidance Navigation System which is able to receive GPS updates. CEP, requirement 90 meters. Warhead, the Mark V MIRV can carry up to 14 W88 warheads while the Mark IV MIRV can also carry 14 W76 warheads. Start I reduced this to 8. New Start provides for further reductions in deployed launch vehicles, limiting the number of submarine-launched ballistic missiles to 288, and the number of deployed SLBM warheads to a total of 1,152. In 2014, another Start treaty will reduce the number of deployed SLBMs to 240. Operators equals submarines currently armed with Trident II missiles equals United States Navy, Henry M. Jackson, Alabama, Alaska, Nevada, Tennessee, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Kentucky, Maryland, Nebraska, Rhode Island, Maine, Wyoming, Louisiana, Royal Navy, Vanguard, Victorious, Vigilant, Vengeance. See also Trident, RSM 56 Balava. R-29 RMU-2 Liner, R-29 RMU Cineva, R-29 Visota, R-39 Riff, M-51, M-45, JL-2, July 1, K-Missile Family. References